So we've uh, touched upon social media marketing for our apps. This is something for you to look into more detail on your own. I'll put my notes on these ideas in the folder. And the last ideas that I want to touch on is this whole time, this whole class, this sequence of classes has been focused on Android development because as I said early on, having Windows based computers allows us to create Android apps, but not iOS apps. You need, you need Apple hardware to run the software to use Taco to do iOS apps. So if you've got a Mac, then you can set up Taco like we've talked about this whole time. And uh, on your Mac, then you'll be able to do Taco run iOS. You'll be able to run it on an, on an iPhone and such on a Mac. We don't have Macs here, obviously. Well, if we if we go to um, the website build.phonegap.com, what we get here is Adobe's PhoneGap build. PhoneGap is a variation of Cordova, which is a variation of what we use. Taco. So Adobe has a version of Taco, a version of Cordova. So big famous Adobe, big profitable Adobe, has their version, which is take the pain out of developing mobile apps. Simply upload your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript assets to Adobe PhoneGap Build cloud service, and we do the work of compiling for you. So using Cordova slash PhoneGap slash Taco, which is what we learned in class, we, we just write an HTML project, like we did in part one and part two and part three, and then we upload it, and they will compile it. They will use their hardware to then convert that project into all the platforms, iOS, Android, Windows Phone, and, and all of them. Um, so all the time when we were in the command prompt and we type taco build and taco run Android and such, we've been doing it the, the, the most hands-on way, the most difficult way. I don't think it was very, very difficult, everything that we talked about, but it could be more difficult. Here, Adobe will take care of it for you. You provide your app and it will build it for all the platforms. And if it sounds too good to be true, it is to some degree because Adobe is a for-profit company. So this service, they're not giving it away out of the kindness of their hearts. They do have the free plan, which allows you to create one app for all the platforms. So in theory, this app that we just created, we can then publish it via PhoneGap build to the iOS. As, as an iOS app. We had an APK for Android, we would have an IPA for iPhones, we would have an, what's over on Windows, I think it's an XAPP file. We would be able to create the, the, the app for all the platforms here, one at a time with the free app, with the free plan. You go up to the next plans, uh, well, there's the private version, there's the open source version. The open source then is that, in theory, then everyone can see your code. If this is like my company's app, that's, I don't want that. I don't want everyone to see my code. That Therefore, they give you one private app. If you upgrade to these other plans, well, then you can have 25 private apps. Your, your company code is safe, no one will see it. It's not open source, it's proprietary. That's maybe what I want. Your app can be these sizes. Ours. Um, I have to double check if this is your assets or your actual APK file. But here it's 50 megabytes or 100 or up to 1 gigabyte. Can you use the Cordova Core plugins? Yes, all of that camera, Cordova camera, Cordova battery, Cordova vibration, all of that, yes, you can use all of that. Can you use third-party apps like our social sharing? Yes, we can do that. Can you upload your apps 
I mean your plugins manually? No, not on the free one, but on the paid ones, yes. We didn't, we didn't do it this way. We didn't worry about it. We did it via repositories. So we can continue to do that. Collaborators, unlimited. We can have multiple people working on this project to help me finish it. The free tier, of course, is free. And then the paid plans starting at $9.99 a month, $10 a month to get these other levels. And with an Adobe Cloud uh, account, it, it also allows you to, to use the system. So if you've got Creative Cloud, if you, if you have you know, Photoshop Creative Cloud and such, you have an Adobe ID, and therefore you'll have access to this. Um, what we will do, because there's the free version, we're going to give this a shot. We're going to set up the free account here, see how this works, we'll see how pretty easy it is. And then again, this is what solves the issue about, I don't have a Mac to build my Mac, my iOS version of my app, but via Adobe PhoneGap build, we can. So what I'm going to do here then is, uh, I'll go back to the top and click Get Started. Oh, it takes you down here. Uh, I'll click on Completely Free. I want to do the completely free version. How many of you currently have an Adobe ID? One or two people. Okay, you can use the existing one, or I'm gonna I'm gonna create one right now. Uh, I think I'll be okay by completely making this up. So. I'm just going to put right here, create or get. I don't have an account, so I'm going to get uh, an account. So click on that here, get an Adobe ID. Put in first name, last name, email address. I'm making up that email address. Put in a password. Stay informed about Adobe products, yes or no, it's up to you. You'll get emails once in a while about the latest features, maybe new phone gap stuff, so it's up to you to decide. You can totally make this up, do it legitimately, doesn't quite matter for us, we can delete it later. So I'm going to create an account, sign up. Complete your registration. Okay, so I'm creating the account. Choose a plan. Phone gap bill $9.99 a month. Creative Cloud starting at $29.99 a month. So if I only want to use build, it's $9.99 a month. But if I already have the Creative Cloud membership, which I might be paying $30 a month, that will be um, will be part of it. Okay, uh, for me, it looks kind of odd in that it's saying, okay, now choose a plan. I don't want any of those. I wanted the free one. It doesn't seem like I have anything else where to go, but I'm going to ignore all of this and go up to apps. Okay, yeah, that'll work. So if it's asking you to pay for anything, just ignore it. And at the top we have apps, plugins, docs, blog, etc. I'll go up to apps. This is where I would manage my apps. Plugins is a list of all available plugins, how to use them, search, all of that. This is a really nice, one of the good things about Adobe Build here is that it lists the various, uh, the various plugins kind of easily. Here's our social sharing plugin right there. 
barcode scanner, if I wanted to make an app that would scan barcodes. Um, there's one there. Connecting with Facebook. If I wanted the ability to for people to log into my app via Facebook. The, all of these I can get to without Adobe Build. But it's just the cool thing that I like about Phone Get Build is that it's all centralized here. Whereas via the way we've learned, we have to go to Apache, uh, to cordova.apache.com and educate ourselves and go to various dis separate websites. Here, Adobe has done a good job of putting it all together in one portal. And for the free version of the app, that's, that's great. When you want to get more advanced, then the paid versions are there and then you have to pay. Um, even here it's saying, this repository is deprecated, go check out Cordova. Oh, it's even directing us back. Never mind what I said, it's directing us back to, to Cordova.apache. I guess they don't want to manage it themselves anymore. Docs, that's going to go over to docs.foamgap.com, which is a variation of Cordova.apache.org. Because it's all open source, you know, Adobe's got their version of it. It's going to be all the same, basically, where I go look at the, the APIs and I go look up how to use the camera. It's all going to be here. It's going to have extra things, perhaps, that might not be available on the other ones because that's the point of Adobe putting their own spin on things. And that's one of the good things about open source, that people can make it their own version and then for whatever reason use it and profit from it, whatever. And so Adobe has got their own version. We'll keep up to date on the blog, what's new with, with PhoneGap. So just last week they released uh, version 6.3. Frequently asked questions and support. I'm sure you get some basic free support, and if you've got the paid account, better support. So for us then, under apps, on our apps, we have either the open source version or the private uh, version. The open source assumes that you've got your code uploaded somewhere, like GitHub. How many of you have heard of GitHub before? We'll touch on GitHub a little bit in a, in a bit. GitHub is basically the place where you can upload your code. Upload your code, have people collaborate on it. That's got private or public repositories. And so if I'm uploading my code to GitHub, I can easily import it into my phone get build here. For the moment, I'm saying I, I want a private app that I don't want people to see my code because the default of GitHub is that everyone sees your code so that you can collaborate. But I will say I have a private, private app. The way this works is I need to upload the assets of my app. What we need to do is, if you go over to your project, you go into your apps project, we only need to upload to PhoneGap our www folder. We need to do two things though. We need to include the config XML file in the www folder and then we need to compress that as a zip file. So the way I would do it is I'm gonna copy just the WW file to my desktop. I'm gonna leave alone my app that is all working and everything. I'm gonna copy just the, the WW folder to my desktop and then I'm gonna copy the config XML file into the WW folder. Obviously, I don't want to do this with my original app because then I'm going to mess it up. So my app is, you know, the, the app is there. All of its resources are there, including the config file. And then in Windows, if you right-click the copy of your WW folder, right-click, send to, compressed, zipped, folder. This will take all of our assets in the WW folder, compress them into one archive file. That's what Adobe wants. It wants your whole project as one file, one zip file. On the Mac, you do it 
somehow. I haven't done it very recently on a Mac, so I don't remember how you make zips on a Mac. But um, you want to make a zip file of your project on a map on a Mac, make sure your XML file is in there. Just let that run. It should happen pretty quickly. Right. You don't really need to change that name there. I suppose I'll just put my STCE. So that project file has been zipped, compressed, archived as one file. That's what Adobe is asking us to upload. I go back here and select upload a zip file. I'm going to select my zip file. It's recognizing from my config file the name of my project. There's my description in the XML file. There's my version code, or my, uh, my version number there, owned by, that's what I have in my XML file that says um, my, uh, I think that's the package ID, the unique ID for my app here according to Adobe, so this is unique for everyone. Um, it's showing here that it's, it's going to be compatible with iOS, Android, Windows, these different versions. And um, I don't want the debug version. I want the final version, so that's off. I don't know where hydration is. Don't worry. Okay, ready to build. <clears throat> now the Adobe servers are chugging along, processing it all. You see these little progress bars are moving along, and then they become green or blue. This one's red. And then here, a QR code for you to scan it on your device, to load it on your device. So if you've got a QR code reader on your device, you could pull up the, the app for testing purposes on your device. If I look at the Android view, it's going to give me my APK file, where then I can sideload it or upload it to the app stores or whatever on the Windows 1 there too. It's going to download the APX version. That's a Windows compatible app version. For the iOS, it had a problem. Now, the confusing thing here is that If you click on these, it'll want to download the final file. This one didn't build properly when I clicked on it. It took me to another screen. That other screen is the same screen I can get to by clicking the app. Because in this view, is going to show me all my apps. The confusing thing is, is that, that you should then click on the name of your app to see this, which is what I saw a moment ago when I clicked on iOS because there was a problem. Here, then, the details of my app are that um, I didn't provide a key for my Android, a JKS file, for my Android version. So it built the unverified version, but you saw that I could have downloaded it easily. I don't even have a Windows developer <coughs> key to provide, but if I go to developer.windows.com, I can go get the the develop the JKS file. It's not going to be a JKS file, but you're going to get your key file for Windows. And then for iOS, you even if you're just doing some debugging and beta testing, you need a developer's key. So you go to developer.apple.com, pay the $99, you get your key, and then you can do all the debugging you want. Next year, renew your key and you keep being a developer. For these, I think it's also like 20 bucks, 25 bucks for Windows. It's free for Android. We developed, we did our own JKS file. 
but you see still for the iOS you still you can't get away very easily from getting the the developers certificate for iOS and so if I were to add the key and browse I could load up my JKS file um, I, don't think, I don't think title means anything alias definitely does that's the name of your alias in your key file need this to be named something slightly different. I think this is the same. Extension JKS did not match. Our JKS file, Adobe wants it to be named. Whatever the name of your key file is, dot keystore. So it just needed to be named dot key store. It's the exact same file. It's the exact same file, but Adobe wants it to be named dot key store. So I uploaded my key. I need to put my password in. So I need to unlock my key store file. I clicked on the key. I give it my password for the whole um, for the whole file, which is the key store password, and for the particular alias, which here they're calling certificate. This will be unlocked for one hour. Fine. Put my password in. Rebuild it. And that's creating the release ready version of the <coughs> of the file. I would do a similar process for the uh, Windows version. I would do a similar process for the iOS version. Any of these errors will tell you here you must provide a signing key. Find out how to fix this. It will give you the documentation which will just basically tell you go get one over at developer.apple.com uh, And just type that. But anyway, this is this is their system. How you do it all with with Adobe's with Adobe's version. Uh, you don't need the actual hardware for the Mac, but you still need the developer's key. It's all pretty straightforward within this portal, and we saw we can have one private app right here. If I want to have a a new app. Let's say I'm developing a new version of the app. I'm trying to do private. No more. I'm out of free private apps. I have to do via the open source method. Now there might possibly be a way somehow to possibly reuse your one slot private apps. Maybe. Somehow. For you to reuse the one private app. Not even versions. versions of the apps, yes. You will do that. You will be able to do version 2, 3, 4, etc. But you can only make, you can only have one private app at a time. Let's say I'm going to make a different app for another topic. Then now I need to upgrade or do the open source method or somehow figure that out. So this is um, 
This is Adobe Build. It's their variation of Cordova that we've been using under the hood of Taco. And it can be pretty useful to target the big platforms, Windows, iOS, Android. We provided a, a, uh, an, a, a complete web project, and it does what it needs to. Any questions on any of this so far? Without the JKS file, it is the it is the unverified version of the app, and the app stores will not accept that version. Yes, I understand. So, hmm. when you build the JKS, from where do you create that JKS? That JKS file came from the time we talked about uh, handout number eight. The JKS file is from our handout number eight. This one that we've been using. Here, when, when we do taco build Android release JKS file, oh. that's what Adobe's so doing. It's a, key. Okay. Mm -hmm. it's a certificate, it's a key that identifies us as a developer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. I put make sure in your dub folder you've got oh, config okay. XML. If we didn't put it in there and tried to upload it, Adobe would tell us, you're missing the config file. But I'm telling us beforehand, we need the config file inside the www file. What for Windows is XAP file? It's not EXE. This is assuming more for the modern generation of Windows 8 and up. So it's not going to create EXE files. It's going to create Windows 8 and Windows 10 apps for the Windows store, oh. not EXEs. Also for Windows Phone. So if you're on tablets, or f Windows tablets, Windows Phone, Windows 8, and Windows 10, that's what this app is. Okay, so... So any uh, further questions? A, a few more things to talk about, but any further questions on Adobe um, PhoneGap? Okay, the, um, there's more than one way to, there's more than one way to skin the digital cat. Um, this is one of them. Adobe's portal here to create cross-platform apps. We're providing an HTML project. Adobe creates it into these multiple platforms. Well, it's a variation of what we've been doing here with Taco, Build iOS, Build Android, Build Windows. You know, that, that's our hands-on version of doing what PhoneGap is doing. There's more than one way. There's more than one company that is trying to, to, to crack this code, trying to solve this problem. Uh, whereas very beginning day one, three months ago, I said, well, traditionally we would learn to make an app for each platform based on its native code. We would traditionally learn Objective-C for an iPhone app, C-sharp for a Windows app, and Java for an Android app. you have said that before. This class, we're focusing on HTML because there's many more of these new generation methods that will let us target multiple devices. That's what Taco has been doing for us the whole time. That's what Adobe PhoneGap does. Let me show you another alternative. I have not explored it as much as I would like because there's so many hours in the day. But if you look up Intel NDK, here's Intel's hand or Intel's version of trying to do this cross-platform development. If you search Intel NDK, you'll get the Android NDK for Intel architecture. Um, I think the first one is the one 
one we want. Um, no, I'm sorry, not NDK, X, Intel XDK. Yeah, this is the one, sorry, XDK, NDK is something else. Intel XDK. Um, for building cross-platform integrated development environment, debug, package, etc. Intel XDK. One solution for IoT apps and mobile app development. IoT, of course, is the Internet of Things. For us, what matters is mobile apps. All the capabilities you know and love for developing mobile HTML5 apps. Uh, so build and deliver HTML5 apps quickly and simply, or create your next success story, building a success, better world, HTML5 game tools and services. So this is Intel's version of all of this stuff, how to uh, you know, build games in HTML, responsive apps and they've got their own tools their own software they've got they've got their own uh, IDE if you've used Eclipse before or you've used Visual Studio you know that's a full featured environment whereas we're we're doing command prompt and notepad as our development environment well there's the full featured ones like Eclipse Visual Studio etc which handle all of that deve development process Intel's got their own version um, so you go on here to read all about it, and you go on to download it, and uh, you go to read about it, and how does it work, and setting yourself up, and all of that. Again, this is a big topic. This could be its own class all by itself, three months long. But this is another alternative that uh, the way we did it, we saw that it works. We saw that it's rough around the edges. We saw that it's that it's command prompt usage, which is not that complicated, but this is based on a nice pretty interface where you just click a few buttons instead of typing a command instead of misspelling a command you have a pretty interface to click on and to work with so let's see do we have any screenshots Documentation, overview video, getting started. This, this behind the scenes, oftentimes though, still goes back to Cordova. It still goes back behind the scenes to this framework that we've been using the whole time. It's just that it's Intel's skin on it. It's Intel's spin on it. Let's see if this video is interesting This is Matt from the Intel XDK team. I'm going to walk you through a quick demo of how to get started creating your first app using the XDK. First, you'll need to download the XDK and sign up for a user account. The free download can be found at xdk.intel. And then, register as a new user. Start your new project from the menu on the left by choosing a template, sample, or demo code base. There are standard HTML5 and HTML5 plus Cordova code bases to choose from. Let's start with something nice and simple, like the Hello World demo. So that goes on then to show you um, how you would do it with, uh, with that framework, that platform where it's all integrated in an environment of coding, of testing, debugging, deployment and such. It comes with templates, whereas we use jQuery Mobile, we still wrote our code ourselves, 
um, here. It comes already with these built-in platforms, or that is, a, you know, structures. But if I want to make some sort of shopping cart app, or I've got a starting point, or this kind of app, I've got starting points and code snippets all built in here, powered by Intel. Um, this was last updated in, in January, but it's been um, in development and, and in usage, and this is just another way to do what we did. Everything that we did in this class, we could do it with some variation with the Intel XDK. Just another way to do it. It's still going to be HTML, CSS, JavaScript code, but Intel's going to take care of all of the, the stuff about uh, compiling it and deploying it. You can have a code editor built in here with what we've been used to, color coding, all of that stuff. It's reminiscent to some degree of Sublime in that you see all your assets at once and you can easily get into um, your asset files. It just goes on, you should watch the video, and then it's going to run on emulators built into the software. I don't know how much the software is, but it's probably a couple gigabytes of space. And uh, test it and debug it and deploy it to a real device or virtual devices. And same thing that we did, just a variation. So again, if I had the time and the many things that I do, I would like to learn about this a bit more, see if maybe this is a viable thing um, to engage in. But this is as much as I'll show about this one. You can get it at uh, xdk.intel.com, I guess, or the way we did the search. So you can look into that, go to the forums, documentation, you can go look at uh, the App Showcase, who's used this tool to make apps. And so forth. So any questions on the Intel XDK? So, yeah. The one that's better and the one to choose is the one that works for you. So if you have it do what you... I mean, we never tested it. Like, maybe I'll even have Yeah, I don't have too much to say about this one to fully give the best opinion about it. And I've actually got one more to talk about where I have a better opinion. So there's so many of these to, to work with, yes. And that's what I'm saying, that if I had the time, I would learn as much about these as possible, and then maybe this is the best way of all, and I just have not learned enough about it to give an opinion. So there's already something like, why Intel standing out? Like, what's the nature of that? Like, what's they claim? Well, better I s than better e everyone's going to claim that their version is better, but honestly, if you have to really break it down to the most cynical level, most likely it's because they eventually want to sell you something. I don't know if Intel will, but Perhaps, oftentimes, what they sell nowadays is is the tech support. You know, you pay some fee, um, and you're going to get tech support directly from them to make your app work. They're not going to sell you the tools, but they're going to sell you the help. That's very common in a lot of these modern, you know, s software as a service sort of things. So maybe, you know, I don't want to obviously slander them. I don't know what their purpose is of making their version. There's already the Taco version. The the, the Adobe version, the plain Cordova version, now there's the Intel version. I'm going to show one more version in a moment. So they've all got their own version, they all think theirs is the best, and probably somehow they're figuring out a way to monetize it. Probably help. Selling help. This, uh... Most likely it's based on open source, but their actual software environment is not. I'd have to look into it. I'm not sure. It'll be somewhere in the help system. But the main thing about them is that their coding system is built in. Their emulators are built in. All of that is built in, and probably that isn't open source. But we'd have to look through it. The third one, or is it the fourth one, that I'll mention is uh, another one now from um, Microsoft, visualstudio.com. Visual Studio has been around a long time. It's been used to make lots of apps throughout the decades. Microsoft has seen this emergence of mobile devices, and it's seen its market share decline in the PC sphere and such. And Microsoft, from what I've been following in the tech journals, has seemed to really start to embrace open source. 
Microsoft's been around, whatever, 40 years, and they're starting to really seem to embrace open source. As a matter of fact, there is a version of uh, Visual Studio that they spun out called Visual Studio Code, which is like Notepad++, which is like Sublime Text, which is like these any code editors just focused on code editing, pretty lightweight, multi-platform, it's for Mac and Linux, free, and it's just another coding environment, like um, Notepad++, but it's got you know some of the more modern aspects like Sublime Text where you can see multiple assets at once, cross-platform. There's no Notepad++ for the Mac, there's no Notepad++ for Linux, but here they've got versions for Mac, Linux, and Windows. It's all the usual. Well, that's a little off topic. There is Visual Studio itself, which is used to make pretty heavyweight apps. And now they've got a version called Community Edition, which is totally free. They've got the classic Visual Studio, which is like $2,000, whatever it is. I, I don't know what it is at the moment. They've got their big enterprise version of Visual Studio, and they've got their community edition, which is totally free for small teams like us. Even for even if I have my company and two people in us in my company make apps, it's free for us. And so what this one what what this is is basically again using Visual Studio to write whatever language I know, because with Visual Studio I can write HTML, I can write C sharp, I can write C++, I can write um, you know, all of these big languages and have that transformed, compiled into all of the platforms. iOS, Android, everything. A free, fully featured and extensible IDE for creating modern apps for all the platforms as well as web apps and cloud services. Everything you need in one place. Editor, um, extensible with Xamarin, where you can, if you're if you're more versed in C++ or C Sharp and such, you can use that code to make apps. We've used HTML, but you can use basically every code. Coding tools, debugging, all that good stuff, emulators, multiple languages, big ecosystem. This is Microsoft's version relatively new, just like Intel's version, because traditionally you use the native language and the native software for every platform. You would use Xcode for your iOS apps. You would use Eclipse or Android Studio for Android apps. Microsoft has seen well. It might be valuable for us to embrace open source and put out software we're not going to get people perhaps to buy the software anymore, but we can sell them other things. We can build this ecosystem. And the whole portal is here all about how do you do everything and the documentation and everything. One of the big downsides of this is that uh, as I've used this to learn more about it, it's oftentimes about a 20 gigabyte download the whole thing with all of these emulators and all of this code and, and templates and all of this, it's about 20 gigabytes just to install on your system. So big download, big install on various systems that I've tested it, it tested it on. It took literally an hour just to install. And then after that, it works. But then a lot of investment there in resources. The community version, the yes, the full enterprise version of Visual Studio. I'm not sure how big that is. I don't use that one. I use the community one, and that one has been around 20 gigabytes. Documentation. Um, let's see. Part of the issue also is that uh, there's just a lot to, to, to read and still a lot to uh, educate yourself on, and so lots of documentation. It's easiest if you're focused on one platform and you're learning one software and you're targeting one ecosystem. 
when you want to be cross-platform, well, Intel's got a solution, Microsoft's got a solution, there's the Cordova one, there's the Adobe one, everyone's trying to do their version of it if you want to be cross-platform, and that's most likely going to be the, the big the way of the future because I would have to learn three different languages to reach all the platforms or HTML and use some of these tools. There's uh, this is still behind the scenes however using Cordova. Everyone's still using Cordova. It's just this is then Microsoft's pretty interface all around it. You can load up samples and tutorials and watch videos and everything. Well, I want to do this via C++. That's what I learned. Yes, here it is. Go browse the C++ section and take your C++ skills into Visual Studio Community so that you can make Android apps, iPhone apps, Windows apps. You need advanced things like cloud services and data migration and all of that. Well, they've got their Azure tools. Those are not free. That's most likely how they're making their money because your app is nice, but it also needs to talk to the cloud. Here's our cloud infrastructure. Very affordable. Maybe. Pretty up to date. They just updated this. This is the one that I have been experimenting with, and I really like it, and I've been testing it. And most likely, come January 2017, this class will use this. Most likely this is what I'm going to use when I get to the part about the certificate because I've been teaching this version of the class for about three years now and it's been changing here and there and and um, the way that I'm doing it now works but you know it's rough around the edges here and there and most likely eventually I'm going this way and this is what will be the software in January and it's still going to be HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, but it's going to be within the confines of Visual Studio where I'm going to do my coding and debugging and deployment and all of that. The very last thing to further confuse things, I'm confused about this one, if you go to taco.visualstudio.com, all this time what we've been doing is we've been using taco, which is related to this taco came from Microsoft. I think I mentioned it, but that was a while ago. Taco.tools is where we got all of this taco stuff. If you looked on the bottom right corner, Microsoft. We've been using a Microsoft open source thing the whole time. So All of these separate websites, but they're all kind of telling you similar things. And yeah, it is confusing to, to kind of parse all of that and figure out where it's coming from what it does and all of that. And then there's taco.visualstudio where you can go get more guides and videos and tutorials and examples. Beginner's Guide. There's a cool app here that you should check out. How to make a weather app which then targets Android or iOS and all of that. The install guide and you're going to use Visual Studio, the custom build, and you're going to add Cordova to it, and then you've got 20 gigs. So it's all there, and all the documentation, because that's going to install Ant and Java and Android SDK and Node and Git and adds up. And there's a spot there. Okay, I'm sold. How do I set this up for Mac? There it is. iOS setup guide. I think this, the Taco.VisualStudio is one of the most complete ones. The Intel one is good, but I need to re read more about it. Taco Tools is good, but this one from Visual Studio seems to be the most complete, although this one hasn't been updated in about a year. Uh, and um, tells you here about setting all of this up for, for use on the Mac. And without a scary command prompt, it's all just you know, pretty buttons that you click on, and then you've got your app running on an iPhone. Pretty detailed and further extended with links and everything is here. And then of course at the bottom you've got you've got the please help. And people here are commenting and helping. This uh, Visual Studio actually 
this method of building apps via Visual Studio uh, is uh, build an Android app in Visual Studio. Uh, my company, the one that I'm a part of, we have a quick intro to that. We have a video, build an Android app with Visual Studio in five minutes. And it seems to have done pretty well. It's got 61,000 views. People want to know this. People have this experience, perhaps in Visual Studio, and I want to build an Android app in five minutes. Uh, of course, we saw that we took three months to build one. So this is just setting it all up, and the video itself is in five minutes. But uh, 61,000 people have watched the video, and then we get inquiries. People comment and ask for help and give some free help and further links, and then people say, can I get help developing a, a book app? I say, yeah, contact us for business inquiries. So people getting a hold of us to hire us to build the app. This, this person says it took nine hours to download and install it on their system. Someone's asking, what do I do here? All of that. So. Check out these big savings exclusively for Sam's Club business members. Find over 10,000. Plenty of these. Someone over here Hello, developing cross platform apps with C Sharp. Let's build an Android app in Visual Studio. So in five, two, watch that video. It's here narrating and talking download, about downloading the software and setting it, it up. Let it install. 23 gigabytes. And then eventually. And uh, to get a bunch of feedback the very first time, it'll take a while because it has to fully download and set up all your, all your tech. If you get a question about the. Um, Firewall, let it go through. So here so I am, there. switched over sure to my real device. Hello, the device application is Visual ready. Studio. So that's proof of concept. Wow, that I've got uh, an app. So this is still yeah, in debug mode. I can go code and editor like we've been used to, code completion, all of that. It's like ready to rock. very big overhead of having it all uh, that. And I don't have to nice, do anything nice special. And there it is, automatically and loading up. Um, I'm ready to rock on my device. Oh. What I can also do is... So we have all of those possibilities then. We have the um, Adobe PhoneGap build. We have uh, Intel XDK. We have Microsoft Visual Studio Community Edition. Microsoft Visual Studio 2015 Community Edition. Microsoft loves huge names. Behind the scenes, they're all basically using Cordova. And we're using Taco. All of this is for cross platform. Mobile development. Any questions on this? And then I have one last thing, and then we're done. Any questions on any of this? Uh, the last thing that I'll leave you with is couple of addresses here, github.com slash vmcampos and github.com slash instructor victor. Uh, we'll see these in a moment, but github is a place for you to store your code, to share your code, and most of the time whatever code that I write I, I like to share that with people so people learn about it and 
I work on apps here and there for companies and for fun on the side. And so whenever I wrap up a semester of classes, I put all of the code there on that account, Instructor Victor. So I'm going to upload the final versions of our code to that account soon, probably over the weekend. And then any apps that I work on on my own, my own personal fun projects and such, I put a version of the code up there for people to look at and play with. So I'll show you briefly first the class GitHub, github.com slash instructor victor, and um, go look at repositories. So I, I put it there. I haven't uploaded the latest ones. They're still from the spring semester, not the summer. There's the Android 3 class, 2 class, 1 class. Basically the whole project for the previous, these last previous semesters have been uploaded. You can go in there and you know, download the whole thing. You can download the whole zip file and you have the whole complete project. You can go in individually to the WW folder and just look specifically at the JS file. There's all the code for the project at that point. I'm going to upload our versions for this semester over the weekend. So if you want to bookmark that address or or follow so you can keep up to date with, with the projects. Here's where I'll be adding the class code. Because you have the YouTube videos, which I'm not going to take that down. Those are going to be there indefinitely. You can go back and watch those videos again. And then I'm going to upload the versions of the code, not every week-by-week -week version, but the final version of the code for each class. So at least you have something to look at to compare with the lessons. Then the github.com slash vmcampos. This is of my own personal one there. And you can check out projects. So uh, there's a pouch intro there. I guess I uploaded 19 days ago. There's this random name, picker thing, gas, recipes. Some of them are very incomplete ideas because I also like to use GitHub as a way for like, um, like this one. Uh, one day, one of the projects I'm going to work on is an app to showcase mixology, drinks and such. Uh, I like to uh, bake and cook and do mixology on the side. So one day, I'm going to be working on this app. Um, and I like to use GitHub up here for their issue tracking system where I'm setting up, here's my game plan. I want these different screens, it's going to be the basic feature, later on I want this enhancement, so I'm, you know, setting myself up as a, as a roadmap of developing my app. And this is all for free on GitHub. So, those two addresses there, I'll, I'll put these notes in the, in the folder a little bit later in just a moment, but then uh, the, uh, the life of the app developer is never done, but hopefully you, you like what you're doing and um, keep doing it if it's fun. So with that we'll wrap up the class. Thank you for, for coming and sticking it out all of this time, and hopefully you've got some cool project to show off, and maybe see you in a future class.